What's going on guys? I'm Alex. And I'm Steve. And this is Black Series Rebels, a special edition road trip to Northern California to take Matt Martin from the Lucasfilm Story Group to, to breakfast. breakfast. So Steve. Yeah, Alex? Right now we're driving up to Northern California from Los Angeles to take Matt Martin to try the entire solo themed menu at Denny's. Oh, I can't wait for crackling, popping candy. <laughs> crackling, popping. On my milkshake and pancakes and sausage and we, just. We should ask if they can apply the galactic pop crunch to every single menu item. On the menu, it does say order. It's a like one side. Se one it's seventy five. Like it's like a dollar seventy five for a little tiny like ketchup craft thing. A full of, of pop rock of popping strawberry flavored candy. Here's the thing though, I love moons over my hammy. So Ooh. I'll probably just order that and look at the solo menu because <laughs> I'm a creature of habit. So you were in Costa Rica this last week. I was, I, I hear a lot happens. A lot happened in Star Wars news. So since we're not in our studio today, I figure we've got about eight hours to talk about <laughs> Star Wars. So why don't we start from the top? Uh, Let's do it like this. Hey Alex. Yeah, Steve? What happened this week in Star Wars news? Well, while you were in Costa Rica and I was preparing for our awesome road trip up to Lucasfilm, it was pretty much all Star Wars all the time. Because as you know, Han Solo premiered, which the best part is people can't see this right now. We're actually on Buena Vista Boulevard. And look it, there's a Solo. Literally, Solo. <laughs> so we're on Buena Vista Boulevard crossing Alameda. And if you guys know Los Angeles, that's actually the Disney lot. So we're driving by the Disney lot where the Southern California Lucasfilm building is located. So we're actually gonna drive from Lucasfilm to Lucasfilm. to Lucasfilm to pick up Matt Martin and take him to breakfast. So every time there's a new Star Wars movie coming out, all the bus stops on this street in particular change over to Solo. They just changed from Infinity War. But while you were in Costa Rica, pretty much everything happened that you could possibly want to happen in terms of like how they would promote a movie. They released four clips did you watch these clips? Uh, I watched several, yes. Okay. I watched, um, there's one with- Hold on. Okay. Spoiler alert, myself. spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you're avoiding the clips that Disney has released, Disney has released these clips. If you're avoiding that stuff, we're gonna talk a little bit about them. So just fast forward. The first clip they released was Chewie sort of becoming Han's co-pilot. Yes, I did see this. Did you see this one? Yes. What did you think? Uh, dude, everyone's talking about how Lando's gonna be the breakout of this movie. And while that felt true in the original trailers that were coming out, I don't know, the more and more I'm seeing of this movie, I feel like Chewie's gonna be the Chewie's standout. the rock star? Yes. I mean, it's weird. Cause I feel like that obviously is something that you would want to see for the first time on the big screen on the big screen however this is the type of thing that i really felt was missing from the first couple trailers so the fact that we are seeing this stuff now gets me super hyped for this movie right like these are the yeah. types of moments where you're like oh yeah this is for sure what you would want from a solo movie don't mind that, that's just the alert letting me know not to get over. That's safety first because there's right. a giant bus <laughs> driving it's by. It's true. So they also released another clip, which was of course, uh, the moment where Han meets Lando. Yes. When they're gambling. And they have a fun little moment where it's like, he calls him Han, he corrects him and says it's that Han. That was great. It's great, I hope that that happens through the whole movie. I hope he constantly is getting his name wrong. I have sort of a, a secret hope that that happens. Uh, there was also a clip where Chewie and Beckett are playing hollow chess. Yeah. Did you like this I one? I did, because at that point he's like, it's a hologram. Like, because Chewie's like getting all frustrated. Yeah. To, to like break it up. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. No, I did. That was really good. I'm liking all of these moments. All these moments feel great. And I will say they all feel like moments I would want to see on the big screen for the first time. However, I think this movie needed a little bit of like, don't worry, it's fun. This movie's gonna be good. Uh, and then the last clip of course is Han and Kira and Beckett and all of them going to see Enfys Nest, which we assume is maybe for the first time. A lot of mystery surrounding this character. And Han goes, don't worry, I got this. Did you see this one? 
Uh, I don't know. So Han's like, don't worry, I got this. He's like, all I have to do to give the signal. And all these soldiers come off that frigate over there and he gives the signal and then the Falcon just takes off and leaves. Like literally Lando was like, later. Like Lando just bounced with the Falcon, which again, I thought was like, just a fun little cheeky moment that you wouldn't normally see in a Star Wars movie like that. So in general, these four clips have me feeling comfortable that the movie's at least going to feel lighthearted yeah. and have the right tone. The tone that I didn't feel I was necessarily getting from the trailers. Now, I, do, am I wrong? Do I recall another clip with um, Beckett and Dandy Newton's character and Han's just kind of lurking behind them and then shows up just kind of going, what y'all doing here? I want in on this and they are pretending to be Imperials, and Han's like, y'all ain't Imperials, you're clearly here for a heist, I see some- So, uh, I think that might be a clip from Kimmel or uh, something. I didn't yeah. see that. Okay, so, so that yes. wasn't official. I saw Woody on, uh, Woody Harrelson was on Jimmy Kimmel, I did see that from Costa Rica. Okay, so I didn't see that, okay. so that sounds cool. Yeah, basically, they're standing there, like, kind of taking a look to see whatever it is they're there to rob or something, and Han is, at this point, is clearly still, like, a part of the Imperial Academy or, or something, and he notices these two, and they're in gear that has like blast marks all over it. That's cool. And he basically is like, I want in on whatever you're doing, and they're pretending to be Imperials. He's like, unless you guys like got like lived through gunshots, you're not Imperials. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, again, like always, our weekly poster release. They yes. released the IMAX poster. Very cool. This is the first time I think we've gotten a new asset, like a new, it's like puzzle piece posters at this point with yeah. these solos, but like it's Han kind of holding his DL-44 like in the background, sort of like as the looming figure. Yes. Which was very cool. The other big thing, the other big, big thing was the actual movie premiered. I know, I saw a lot of our friends at the premiere. A lot of our friends were there rocking our pins. I will say, and I mean what I said on Twitter, it's just as cool seeing our pins there as it is being there. Well, like being there is like a, a 12 and having our pins there is a 10. So it's like all the way, but like being there would have been a bonus. But like that being said, it's more fun to drive up and take Matt Martin to breakfast, <laughs> which is what we're doing instead. So the other big thing is Mr. Ewan McGregor was there. Yeah. I Sans beard. That. I did see He didn't that. have the beard. He kept his dirty boots on though. Yeah, can I, can I say I, I take great issue with those boots? I take a big issue. Like if you're gonna wear a nice crisp black suit, wear clean dress shoes. I respect it. I, I agree with what you're saying. But. I mean, I get it. I understand like he's Ewan McGregor. He can do whatever he wants. This is our Star Wars Fashion Police segment. Dude, I mean, this is about as close as we'll ever get to doing an E! Entertainment segment. Should we do a fashion rundown of everybody at the at the solo premiere? I'll tell you what, Matt Martin nailed it. Matt Martin was obviously that best tie. dressed. The Lando tie with the yellow shirt. I saw, I saw he said that uh, Amanda Jean made, made that. Amanda Jean made that? I, yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. What would you wear if you were going to a solo star? I don't know. I kind of would have to go to the big and tall and be like, I need the Matt Martin Lando suit. <laughs> You'd go to, what is it? What's the one that uh, I always make fun Destination of? Destination XL. Destination XL or casual XL. Casual male XL. Casual male XL. All you big sweaties out there know what's up. The big sweaties are like, been there. Had Rocking get... those Harbor Bay shirts. Dude, <laughs> the best part about those stores when I go with you to shop <laughs> is they only have two options of shirt. One, like, whatever size, like 3XL tall, like plaid short sleeve shirts that look like the catcher from Sandlot, <laughs> or they have like ironic Beastie Boy t-shirts. Yes. It's like big guys are only allowed to like Beastie Boys or dress like they're going to communion, <laughs> right? Like it's it's, it, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, for a long time as a big kid that had to shop there in high school, it's always been dad wear. Okay. And so I will say over time, over the last several years in particular, they have they're catching up very so, slowly. So Steve's at the premiere in dad wear. Yes. He's in, he's, you're in khaki cargo shorts. Khaki, <laughs> khaki cargo <laughs> shorts, a blue and yellow plaid short sleeve t-shirt. And like boat shoes. I'm in a Burberry suit because <laughs> I can get that. <laughs> I can wear a Burberry suit. Steel rocked a Burberry. Steel did rock a Burberry. With a farm boy. With a farm boy, I believe. Knapsack was there. He was rocking. Knapsack was rocking. I he think had the like whole he, squad. He had like pinstripes on. So all of our friends were obviously best dressed. Ash, of course, was Ash looking was there good. rocking great. Looking good, looking good. Everybody looked like they were having a great time. And again, it had like a really positive energy. 
the early Twitter reactions are out. Everybody seems pretty excited about the movie. Now, yes. of course, like post Last Jedi, it doesn't surprise me that we're having a little bit of like. Like, there definitely was, like, a couple folks felt ready to hate it. Oh, yeah. No matter what happened. And I think the general consensus is that this is a fun Star Wars movie, that the top's a little slow, but people seem lots really of fans, excited. Lots of, like, fan service. A lot service. of fan service. A lot of fan service, and supposedly... Some prequel some, fan service. Yeah, and supposedly some, some twists really nobody was expecting, and um, has everyone going... Stay away from spoilers. So yeah, obviously, if you're watching this video, we've turned off the comments. Yeah. So you're not even able to comment on it, so you don't need to worry about the comments and our stuff. I am really excited. I keep saying that this is gonna be like the Ant-Man for Star Wars. I'm okay with that. Like, it's fun, there's no pressure, and it's gonna just be silly. This is the movie where like Han is gonna like fight on a giant Thomas the Tank Engine. Like, <laughs> I don't need this movie to be the greatest most amazing Star Wars movie. I just need it to be fun. Yeah, fun and good. So that Ewan McGregor thing and prequel stuff leads us to the next theory. Oh? Do you think that after they drop Han, they see the reception, we're getting a Kenobi announcement in the next two to three weeks? Well, I didn't read too much into it, but I did see from the limited Wi-Fi I had while I was in Costa Rica, I did see that, I didn't read the details of it, I just read headlines that somebody supposedly dropped that Obi-Wan movie is already in pre-production and is, this is unofficially, this is not from StarWars.com or anything like that. By the that, way, this is how you know we're in LA yeah. when you're sitting in traffic like this. It's true. Nothing about this is fake. It's very true. This is fully live. That's Brian back yeah, there, our sound he's guy. He's just listening in. <laughs> he's listening Snoozing in. a little bit, but it's all good. <laughs> We've got a long drive ahead of us. Uh, anyways, I did see some the internet going crazy, at least Twitter, that uh, supposedly the Obi-Wan movie is in, this is the day, this is the morning of the premiere that this came out, that Obi-Wan's already in pre-production out in Pinewood in London, and that they start filming spring of 2020. Spring of 2020? No, sorry, spring got of that 2019. date wrong. 2019. And releases in 2020. Yes. And then we got you Ewan rocking the red carpet, and everyone's going I crazy. I mean, that's I don't, like, yeah, so what? Yeah. Billy D was on the red carpet. Exactly. That doesn't mean anything. Like, yeah. I don't know if I used that to really tell me what's up, but I will say, I think it's inevitable. Now, I, did you happen to see, did, did Ewan just straight up walk the red carpet or did he oh, stop yeah. and talk? No, and, he walked the red carpet. He did not obviously stop. He, I think he signed some stuff, but he was like not answering zip, questions. Zip, okay. Yeah. Which to me goes, it just felt like a stunt more than it felt like him actually going to the premiere. Do you, you know think it I mean? was a thing where it's like, all right, let's 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 dangle a little bit out there for... Let's let them know, like... Because, again, I keep talking about there, there's a chunk missing. Like, we're missing an area where stuff's coming, right? I mean, that would make the most sense to do Obi. Yeah. I would be stoked. Would you be stoked? I'd be... I'd be really pumped. I'd be <laughs> really pumped. I also saw Johnny Favs. But he voices a character. Yeah, but I also saw Johnny a piece of news about Johnny Favs. That's right. That his mm -hmm. TV series is going to be taking place between the Battle of Endor and Return of the Jedi and the, Force new, Awakens. the, new, and the Force Awakens. I am so stoked to hear that news because that, to me, will be the most fun. And that leads the opportunity for, like, maybe Alden to hop in and play Han. Oh, maybe an opportunity for someone to play Luke or Leia. It leaves an opportunity for them to do that. Now, I don't think they will, yeah. but it would be pretty rad if all of a sudden you're like, oh, by the way, guess who's hopping in to play Luke? Because, I mean, listen, every other franchise does that. Look at Gotham, look at Arrow, look at all these shows. It's not out of the realm of possibility for someone to play a movie character on a TV show and have a different actor do it. Do I want that? I don't know, but I'm not against Like, would it. you, you know how the internet's been ablaze with having Sebastian Stan play Luke? Would that be weird for you to see him playing Luke? No. After Jedi, before Force Awakens? I think knowing my brain, understanding just the actual rationale and logic behind it, I would be 100% okay with it. Okay. What do you think? 
Look, I, since we've started this show, had you asked me at the start of this show what I would have thought of that, I would have said blasphemy. Absolutely not. Oh, and I would have rolled my eyes so as hard you, at you. As you should. And I've definitely come since doing this show, I have come to appreciate all the different levels of fandom, but I've also come to appreciate Star Wars as storytelling and characters, and it doesn't matter who's playing the role. Yeah. And so I'm okay with it. I'm cool with that. Well, that brings us to the rumor about Meryl Streep. We didn't even talk about it. You think that's a possibility? I don't even know what this rumor is. I remember but there being... But she's playing a... Leia. Now, I did remember hearing that, like, very soon after Carrie had passed away. So that started coming up, like, a week or two ago. We didn't really talk about it on the show because we don't dabble in rumors, but we've got 10 hours to drive the Lucasfilm. So I guess we can dabble in rumors for a little bit. I did not hear this about Meryl. I don't think it's true. She's the only actress I would be okay with. Wow. Because she's great friends with Carrie, and honestly, she's a better actor than Carrie. Well, yes. She's a better actor than everybody in Star Wars. She's a better actor than almost everybody. <laughs> she's like the best actor ever. Maybe Brando, but you may give her a run for her money, but she is the greatest living actor. So... I, I'd be all right with it. Yeah. I would be all right with it. I don't know how the fans would react i think you'd have a whole faction obviously that would be like yeah but you'd have a faction there that would be like like i said earlier blasphemy oh yeah how dare worse you? worse than blasphemy how dare you they're already flirting with it i feel like they're already like it seems like now that solo's back around and like last jedi's out on blu-ray the anti-disney star wars establishment which everyone's entitled to their opinion I will say sometimes it feels very irrational. Some of yeah, but I mean they pay us a lot of money anyways. So who Disney? Yeah. Oh yeah. How do you think I we mean, got all these we're GoPros? Just, we're, yeah, these GoPros ain't free. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think we got GoPros? Like Disney's, they just loading our pockets with money. Just kidding. Disney has absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, we should make that yeah. very clear. N neither Denny's or Disney or Lucasfilm or anyone associated <laughs> with them is remotely affiliated with this video. Nobody's paying us. We're paying nobody. We have been solely given permission to do two things: pick Matt Martin up and, and feed him breakfast, and Denny's. film in a Denny's and feed him breakfast. That's it. Yes. I feel pretty good about being a week out from Solo. I think that this is a fun, this road trip is a fun way to celebrate that. Uh, I mean, obviously we're gonna be checking in from time to time throughout our trip. I did wanna go over a couple of rules. Rules? So we have some- I'm I, the driver. No, no, but I'm like, if you're All looking, right. if this All is right. the Falcon cockpit, okay. I think technically I'm in Han's seat. <laughs> so, sorry. All right, what are these rules? Uh, the rules are if, we see a place that sells Black Series figures at any point along our drive, no matter what, you have to pull over and see what they have. Okay. Okay? That's the one big rule. The other rule is snacks. I require snacks. Snacks? Yeah. We got snacks. What kind of snacks do you think we're going to get? I think we're def there's definitely going to be some nacho cheese Doritos involved. Maybe even Cool Ranch. Cool Probably Ranch. some jerky. Yes. Probably some Monster Energy drink. I've already been sipping my Monster Energy drink on camera. <laughs> and maybe some Snickers? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to find out. All right. Until then, why don't you punch it, Chewy? So, we made it about an hour into the drive. <laughs> we have a Target and a Walmart. So, we're going to switch over to iPhones, and we're going to check out what they have in the store. Second rule. No matter what, we have to buy something from both. Real quick. Yes. Prediction. What will either of them have? I'm predicting they both have at least a Han Solo, young Han Solo Black Series. What are you predicting? Uh, Cassie and Endor. Cassie and Endor. Okay, let's check it out. We're on our way to Target in Camarillo. We're going to check what they got. But uh, I got to be honest, I feel like a total tool doing a vlog video, <laughs> walking to a Target. It's a nice Target. I know. Young Han. <laughs> Go through it. What do we got? We got Young Han. Young Han. Young Han. <laughs> Young, Han. Young, Han. <laughs> Young Han. Young Han. Oh. Oh! What we would call a pig warmer. Pig warmer. 
All right, guys, we're heading to Walmart. We're gonna get some toys. Toy was Walmart. There's no way. So this is the toy aisle at this Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we pulled over. We followed the first two rules, which is you see a place that sells Star Wars stuff, you gotta pull over. Rule number two, you have to buy something no matter where you go. So our first stop, we got this oh so minty fresh Star Wars Han Solo battle roller. <laughs> I don't know what a battle roller is. I don't know, man, you picked it. I don't know, just something about little Han squeezing his grips and a little tiny Millennium Falcon. <laughs> I was like, that's it. That's our little mascot for the road trip. All right, so we're gonna open this bad boy up. Are you gonna smell it? Oh, sure. <laughs> Smells like cardboard and glue. Now, whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on. This thing is awful, but it's great. I'm gonna have so much plastic and cardboard by the end of this drive. So here he is, a little battle roller. I don't know if you guys can see. We'll, we'll zoom him in right there. So it's basically Han in a little tiny, like go-kart size Millennium Falcon. The Han Solo Lando Calrissian Millennium Falcon. It has a little ball bearing on the bottom so he can kind of roll. So my guess would be is that there's some sort of device we don't have where these like roll in and like crash into each other. Oh, interesting. What if it's just like tabletop, like you- like, Yeah, you roll, roll it and you kind of crash into each other. Like this is, this is high quality crap. <laughs> like, this is great. Like, I love Star Wars toys like this because I would never buy them, but there are people out there that must love this. It reminds me of like the random like toys that like get lost at the bottom of your toy box. And then you open that it. That you, you like, go, it's in the corner when you're time to clean yeah. crap out. And you're like, oh. Oh yeah, I bought that. This isn't even oh so minty fresh. This is, oh yeah, I bought that. <laughs> Oh yeah, I bought that. So th I mean, this is cool. This is now our mascot. I would, I would love to put him, but it looks like he's gonna roll wherever you go. So we're gonna throw him in the glove compartment here. All now, right, what's up next? We went to Walmart next. So we went to Walmart. Now Walmart had a kind of a sad toy aisle. Apparently it's not a full-fledged Walmart. It's not a full-fledged, it's like a Walmart Express. However, the rule is you have to buy something Star Wars themed when you go in. So we got these <laughs> Solo Red Cups with Han Solo art. Oh, it's upside down. This is officially licensed Red Solo Cups. So, I have, to, I'm, I'm curious if there's anything that makes remotely them, interesting on the cup or if it's just packaging. It is literally a, a, red, solo a red Solo cup. cup from start to finish. Now, this feels like an upgrade. Does it? I feel like the original Red Solo Cup was just a round red cup, right? Yeah. I mean, Did it always have these grippies? I don't remember. What's say on the bottom there? It's like little grippies for frat boys. That's like, oh. Gotta put my natty ice in there and throw some ping pongs, baby. Do you find that your solo cup is constantly slipping? <laughs> well, now Red Solo Cup has got little grippies. Little grippies for your fingers. Leave your koozies at home. All right, so should I try it out with the... Yeah, let's see. Oh, no. It... Oh, no. <laughs> it's spilled. <laughs> Off to a good start. That was really strange how that shot out. That yeah. shouldn't have been that complicated. Okay. All right. I find that this cup works the way a cup is intended to work. The question is, does it fit in the cup holder? It does. Well, I'll be damned. So we give those red solo cups an oh, oh so minty fresh. fresh. Oh yeah. So we're gonna keep driving for a little bit. If we see something that sells Star Wars, we're gonna pull over and see what else we can find. But for right now, I'd say we've scored two pretty terrible Star Wars items, but we're doing good. We're on our this way. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, punch it, Chewie. Bam. All right, so we saw GameStop. I gotta run in real quick and see what they got. All right, we got pretty something pretty awesome from the GameStop. We're gonna surprise Steve with this walk and roar Chewbacca. All right, guys, so keeping up with road trip rules, I stopped into a GameStop to pick up the walk and roar Chewbacca. This thing is bad. 
bad. It's just awesome, dude. <laughs> it's just bad. It's like Michael Jackson's bad. All right. Oh, you're opening it. Of course. Oh, damn. Okay, so. Plus, I think he's like stuck in there. Does he have a crossbow? He does. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the details <laughs> of walking roar Chewbacca. We're gonna crash. <laughs> we're literally gonna crash over walking roar Chewbacca. No, we're good. We're safe. Eyes on the road. Ten and two. Ten and okay, two. Okay, so we have walk and roar Chewbacca. Now, he's supposed to roar if you squeeze his stomach. Does he rock? I think he walks. He walks and roars. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, let's see if on the back they show how to... Oh, it's got Last Jedi packaging, huh? Uh, three, three AA batteries included. How to install new batteries. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, so it's a little <laughs> tough to find. Do you need a screwdriver? A battery, we might. Oh, wait. Oh, some Velcro? I hear it. Sorry, Chewy. I'm ripping open Chewy's back. That's okay. Just do it with love. Let's see. <gasps> All right. So he's now walking. Oh, oh and watch roaring. out. Okay, so Chewy. Turn. <laughs> That's little chunky feet. <laughs> This thing's That's awesome. terrifying. That is terrifying. That is the thing that in the middle of the night will just like start going off. <laughs> well, don't worry. He's not gonna be able to shoot you with his felt bow caster, oh, which I'm not gonna it's lie. It's like he hit up Joanne's Fabrics or Michael's. Yeah. I think I gotta give this a solid good review, right? Yeah. This thing is oh so, so minty, minty fresh. fresh. Ooh wee. Thing's awesome. All right. Well, now you've got a buddy to cuddle with on this trip. Hey, Chewy, what do you think about the traffic that we're all of a sudden in? <laughs> He's furious. Let me see this guy. Good Chewy's show. moving faster than we are. Yeah, Chewy could probably walk to pick up Matt Martin faster than we could in this traffic now. This was a good score. I think this so far this is the best thing we found I think so. on our road trip. I think you're right. Cool. Awesome. Good stuff. Well done. Good find, buddy. Oh, so minty, minty fresh. fresh. I would say punch it, but we are currently in traffic. Wireless headphones, battle robot. Okay, it's not bad. Ooh, little damaged boxes. A little damage. Kind of like him. That's not bad. The space swords. Okay, so we've scored some good stuff, but I think this might be our most successful piece of toy merchandise we've purchased. Now, it's true. You and I both picked out the generic Sith Apprentice lightsaber or laser saber Sith Apprentice. Interesting. Now, it makes no sound. It does light up. It does light up. You're not going to be able to see it. You're not going to be able to see it on camera. But I will tell you, it was $12. And I don't know if that's worth $12. Is this worth $12? Uh, if I was six years old? I will say, to scale for like a four-year-old, this is rad. It's like the perfect size oh, lightsaber yeah. for a four-year-old. It looks like it's got a little bit of an inspiration from Obi-Wan's Phantom Menace lightsaber. What are you talking about? No? No. All right. Guess I'm wrong. <laughs> Steve just like, uh, actually, I'm trying to remember what, what, this looks more like Kanan's saber. Oh, interesting. I don't know, saber sweaties? What does this saber look like? I'm not gonna lie. Not my proudest toy purchase. <laughs> now this, on the other hand. This is the ultimate mashup. We got IG-88 station wagon. That's Canon. Canon. Now you guys don't know this, but in Empire Strikes Back, Right after Han goes into Carbonite and they call out, listen, we found Han, the bounty's off. IG-88 goes home, hits up the park and fly, drives his station wagon home, comes home to his wife who's furious that he didn't call after his day's work. The kids aren't doing well in school. He sits down, pops open a natty ice, sits on the couch and just watches football until he knows he's gonna have to go back to being a robot bounty hunter. Now. Is this the greatest Hot Wheel of all time? I think it is. This is... Does it IG have yellow racing stripes? It has yellow racing stripes. You think IG-88 gets his Clark Griswold on in that? Oh, for sure. This is where IG-88's family takes their vacations. 
Like they drive to like Yosemite in this. It's a 70s Chevelle. Let's see what else we have. They have the the Boba Fett Ford Ecoline pickup. Ooh, Ooh that's ooh. rad. Uh, Bosk drives a, a a big van. Of course he does. Uh, Creeper. Dengar drives a creepy van. Another creeper. Uh, Forlom drives like a like a Woody, and then it looks like Zuckus drives a truck. Is Forlom like that? Like the bug eye, way robot. older, like super sunburnt Hawaiian shirt wearing surfer bum. Yeah, from like Pismo Beach. Forlom totally is into bodyboarding <laughs> and paddle boarding. You guys can't really and see it. Banquet beer. Yeah. Yeah, he drinks Banquet. <laughs> All right, let's open up IG88's station wagon. IG88's official station wagon from Empire Strikes Back, deleted scene, where IG88 drives home to his loveless marriage. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, that is great. And he's got the artwork of himself on the yeah. side. Yeah, he's got his own artwork <laughs> yes. on his station wagon. That is rad. This is easily the best pickup so far on our road trip. I think we, I'm gonna kiss the car. This thing is, <laughs> oh, so minty fresh. Ooh. -wee. This is a for sure pickup. Tell you what, if you guys can find IG88 station wagons, tag them on Instagram, we found IG88 station wagons, and we'll send you stickers. IG88 <laughs> station wagon, everybody. All right, Steve, punch it. Let's go. We are six and a half hours into this drive. That sounds about right. We are reaching that point where like your brain feels like, like spunt cake, like sponge cake, you know what I mean? Where it's like the sun has just been blasting in your face. And of course, <laughs> we're almost there, but we saw a target, which means we have to what, Steve? We gotta stop and, and we, we gotta, gotta see check it out. if they have any good Star Wars toys. There's also a Sonic which means we're for sure gonna go to Sonic because Steve's never had it. Steve's never had it and Brian and I love Sonic. What do you think they're gonna have at this Target, buddy? I think we're gonna get some uh, Han Solo Black Series six inch. <laughs> Young Han Solos, okay. I think we're definitely gonna get that. I think we're definitely gonna get the uh, Force Link 2.0 something. Yeah. Probably a lot of Funko Pops. You think we're gonna find an IG-88 station wagon? Definitely not. That oh. is a one of a kind that find. That is a one of a kind. One of a kind find. Hardest. I'm willing to bet if you looked on eBay, that is scalping for some serious cheddar. Serious cheddar. Oh, and there's a Walmart. Uh-oh, oh, that no. means there's double the oh, trouble. No. Walmart and Gilroy. We'll see what they got. Doesn't smell like garlic right now. It doesn't, but the thing about Gilroy, if you guys don't know, it's a very big, Garlic is the agriculture. It's the garlic here. capital of the world. So it really smells like garlic when you're driving down the freeway. So Steve, I think uh, Gilroy Walmart came through. I think Gilroy Walmart is the place to be. Uh, they're making it happen. <laughs> Steve, I think we got to do it. Pop it open. <sighs> it says Black Series. Yes. So we are now at the Target in Gilroy, California. We're gonna see what they have. This is no ordinary target. It's a white target, not a red one. I've never seen one of these. Before. It's a white target. It's rare. It's rare. I don't know what it means. I don't know. Most impressive moment on a toy hunt because we don't have a thing full of peg warmers. We've what got we Han Solo. Okay. We've got Death Star Trooper, Maz, Kylo. Oh, ooh, that's a good score. Oh, oh, no, what are you doing? Leia. Settle down, big boy. Like, this is really good. This is, I'm impressed. A lot of Pretty vintage good figs. Pretty you know? good A lot of vintage figs. Look at the dust on these bad boys, though. Look at that. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a peg warmer right there. Should we get Luke and Wampa? Oh, man. Rose and BB-8. Lando. What do we do here? All right, guys, we're here waiting for our food. It's Sonic. I've never had it before, but more importantly, we have a score. One hell of a toy hunt just went down. And the first one, Walmart. Hey, Alex, why don't you tell everybody what we got? Well, if you can't tell, we scored the most awesome, oh so minty fresh, Black Series Darth Vader 
helmet. And this thing, guys, is amazing. Right, Alex? You give this one the oh so minty fresh. Ooh wee. All right, guys, let's see what we got coming up next. We got these walkie talkies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, after Walmart, we hit up Target in Gilroy, California, and we scored these awesome static free and extended range Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Captain Phasma, and what kind of trooper? Death executioner. trooper? I don't know. Executioner, executioner. trooper walkie talkies. I cannot wait for us to start using these things on the road. Yeah. This is Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma coming in to Stormtrooper Executioner. Breaker Breaker 1-9, that's a big 10-4 old buddy. How you doing over there, Captain? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I would say this was an epic day of toy hunting. This is an epic day. Let's get some food. Let's get to San Jose. Let's put our feet up. Hang out with Patty. <laughs> hang out with Patty for a little bit. Your mom. And then... Got a big day tomorrow. Big day. Big day. I can't wait. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, let's punch it to San Jose!